If you're looking for some assistance in managing your small business, then get in touch with Nexus Virtual Services. It's run by a wonderful lady called Nisha who I've known for years and she offers business support services and admin management for startups and small businesses. She can help you to streamline your operations, increase efficiency, save money on staff costs, scale your business on demand and create more time for strategic thinking. So if you think that may be of benefit to you, then head on over to www.nvirtuals.com. Link in the description. According to Mike Coppinger, Canelo Alvarez could fight Billy Joe Saunders on Cinco de Mayo weekend in the second bout of a two-fight deal with Eddie Hearn to compete on DAZN. And he says that negotiations are ongoing for the Billy Joe Saunders fight. In another tweet, he said that Canelo Alvarez has agreed to a deal with Matchroom to box on February 27th at super middleweight in a title defense against Avni Yildirim at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, and that the event will be streamed globally on DAZN except in Mexico. Now, as most of you, you know, may know, probably do know, Florida is open and has been for several months, which is great. In fact, I'd love to go on a holiday to Florida myself. Maybe I will in the not too distant future, in the coming weeks. But Florida's open, therefore you can put on events in that state, no problem at all. So they're looking at February 27th against Yildirim. Yildirim is going to be a disappointing opponent, I think, to a lot of people. Yildirim was stopped in three rounds by Chris Eubank Jr. a few years back. He did put up a decent account of himself. He did give a decent account of himself against uh, Darrell. But how good is Darrell these days, you know? If Yildirim somehow goes in there and gives a fairly decent account of himself against Canelo, maybe goes seven, eight rounds, that's going to reflect very well on Chris Eubank Jr., isn't it? So Chris Eubank Jr. will certainly be hoping for that outcome because that gives him an inroad to fight Canelo or more of an inroad because he can start beating the drum and say, hey, I took care of this guy in three rounds. Canelo took six. Canelo took seven. You understand that kind of thing. So let's see what happens there. But I have to imagine most people are not going to be particularly enthused about this showdown between Canelo and Avni Yildirim. The Billy Joel Saunders fight, I think people will be more enthusiastic about. But even then, a lot of Americans are going to say, oh, it's another Euro bum. We had Callum Smith over here. Canelo destroyed him. We had uh, uh, Rocky Fielding over here. Canelo destroyed him. And going all the way back through Canelo's career, he's been beating British fighters, you know, from the likes of Matthew Hatton and what have you. So I know there's going to be a lot of skepticism even for Billy Joe Saunders taking on Canelo. But it's interesting, isn't it? The way the situation has changed with regards to DAZN and Eddie Hearn. Because when DAZN first launched, you had all these psychotic, delusional PBC and Deontay Wilder cult members who are praying for the downfall of the zone and praying for the downfall of Eddie Hearn. They didn't care about the quality of the shows. They would find a way to dismiss the shows and, and criticize the shows irrespective of how good they were. These people are not boxing fans. But they're far less vocal in terms of their DAZN hate these days. Why? Because a lot of them have now got DAZN subscriptions. <laughs> the people who are praying on DAZN's downfall are now subscribing to it. Unbelievable. And they, these people are also saying DAZN would never take off. It would never do anything. At the end of the day, it makes no sense if you're a boxing fan to pray for the downfall of a new boxing platform. It, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't mean you're co-signing whoever's behind the zone as good people necessarily. But if they provide a product which is good, then why should you be angry about that? You know? And that's what the zone have been doing. They've been providing good fights, good shows. Not all their shows are good, of course. There's no platform in the world. There's no network, no television station that only ever shows good boxing consistently. Of course not. There are going to be good shows and not so good shows and downright terrible shows on every network. The zone's no different. 
But for the most part, the zone are putting on good stuff. So what's the issue? If you're a boxing fan, you should be happy about the fact that there's yet another player in the game putting boxing on. But of course, these people are not real boxing fans. So yeah, they've gone very quiet on that front because they're all actually subscribed to the zone now, these jokers. And as far as Eddie Hearn, again, this is just a promoter. You don't have to like him. Yeah, there are people in the boxing game who I don't like, but I give them credit for what they do. I mean, Frank Warren is a human being. I'll be honest, I think he's despicable. But he is one of the greatest promoters Britain has ever seen in terms of the shows he's put on. Not just the number of shows, but the quality of shows. Maybe not so much in recent years, but back in the days, in the 90s, Frank Warren was putting on fantastic boxing shows. So despite my misgivings of him as a person, about him as a person, in a professional capacity, I've got to give it up and say, Frank Warren's done some great work in boxing. Okay? Same for Eddie Hearn. You don't have to like him. But if he's putting on good shows, like, come on, if you're a boxing fan, you're, good, you're going to appreciate that. But these psychotic, delusional people who have been hell-bent on the destruction of Eddie Hearn, they must be extra sick in their stomach at the moment because now Eddie Hearn is working with Canelo directly. <laughs> now, Hearn has been working with many fighters on a fight-by-fight -fight basis for many years. He likes to work that way. It not only encourages fighters to sign with him on these short-term deals or fight-by-fight -fight deals, but it also prevents him from getting mixed up in legal battles with fighters, which in this day and age is a very bad visual. It's very bad from a PR perspective if you're a promoter and you're in these high-profile legal battles with big fighters. It's not a good look. So he offers the opportunity for fighters to sign very short deals with him. That gives them the flexibility and it attracts them. Canelo, interestingly, after getting out of his contract with DAZN and Golden Boy, he's gone straight to Eddie Hearn. Now, maybe it's nothing to do with Eddie Hearn. Maybe it's more to do with DAZN. And if you're going to deal with a promoter other than Golden Boy on DAZN, then it's going to have to be Eddie Hearn, right? Unless you're going to deal with what? Uh, your own company? Can you do a direct deal with DAZN? Maybe Canelo could be big enough to do that, but he doesn't have the experience as a promoter. Neither does Eddie Reynoso, his trainer. He doesn't have the experience that somebody like Eddie Hearn has. So, you know, he could have gone to ESPN, Bob Arum. You could have gone, you know, gone to, could have gone to PBC. But no, he's chosen to go with Eddie Hearn. So there's clearly something there that Canelo sees. Okay? Uh, and again, if it isn't about Hearn, maybe it's about the zone. Maybe he likes the platform, despite the fact that he got out of his deal with them. Now, this situation with Hearn could be on a fight-by-fight -fight basis, but it certainly helps Hearn's profile given the fact that he now has the biggest fighter in boxing working under his banner. I mean, that's a huge thing for Eddie Hearn. I know he's not making as much of a deal about it because I guess he wants to take it day by day and not count his eggs before they hatch, but he must be like over the moon <laughs> his ego must be through the ceiling if he manages to get even a two-fight deal with Canelo Alvarez. And he also has been working with Gennady Golovkin for some of Golovkin's fights recently. Does that make the trilogy fight between Canelo and Golovkin easier to make? We'll see. Now, some cynical people, to be fair, are going to say the only reason Canelo is working with Eddie Hearn right now is because Eddie Hearn's got all these Euro bums that he can feed to him and Canelo's been knocking those guys off for years so why not continue it it's easy money for Canelo it's not really about Eddie Hearn's ability as a promoter maybe it's not even about the zone it's just about the fact that Hearn can feed him all these Euro bombs as they would say they are I'm not calling them Euro bombs but you know there are going to be a certain contingent in the boxing public they will call them that you know they'll look at the likes of Callum Smith Billy Joe Saunders and say well this is just food for Canelo that's why he's coming to Eddie Hearn there might be some validity to that. But then again, Eddie Hearn's got people like Demetrius Andrade. I rate him as a fighter. He did put Danny Jacobs in with Canelo. 
Danny, is Danny Jacobs a Euro bum? He's not from Europe. Is he a bum? I'm certainly not saying he's a bum. So I think there's a, a bit more to it than that. But let's see what happens. The first fight, as far as the rumors go, as far as sources like Mike Coppinger are saying, will be Billy Joe Saun uh, excuse me, will be Avni Yildirim. And then after that, Billy Joe Saunders on Cinco de Mayo weekend. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Canelo Alvarez potentially signing with Eddie Hearn. Some sources are saying it's only a one fight deal. Others are saying it's a two fight deal. It remains to be seen, but let me know what you think about it. Is this the right move for Canelo Alvarez? Do you think he should be targeting other people? Because of course, there's the likes of Benavidez, Caleb Plant and so on over at PBC who aren't really getting a look in at the moment. Why aren't they getting a look in? Is it because Canelo is concerned about those fighters? That they might have, the, might have the beating of him? Or is it because he doesn't like dealing with Al Heyman? Maybe he hasn't heard good things about Al Heyman. I don't know. Let me know what your speculation is in the comment section below. All right? I'm out.